So my name is Clay Lowe. Um, we, this is my farm in Wakefield, Virginia. We farm about 1,600 acres. I farm with my dad, Brent, and my brother, Jameson. Cotton farmers, peanut farmers, corn, soybean, and small grains. Heavy users of cover crop. I guess what, what differentiates us a little bit is, is the intentionality with which we use the cover crop. So we're very purpose driven in our cover crop selections. For example, here in this cotton field, we would always want to proceed cotton with a cover crop that has sort of two strategies. One would be something like a cereal rye, because that's going to establish uh, fairly quickly. It's going to get some fall growth, which will do wonders to suppress weeds. The flip side of the coin is cotton is a nitrogen hungry crop. And therefore, we like to pair that rye with something like a, a hairy vetch. And we pair that with the, with the rye. It would be our typical kind of uh, cotton blend um, I'm going into cotton. Some of the weeds that we find ourselves dealing with in a, in a cotton rotation typically are uh, mare's tail, which is typically glyphosate resistant. And that is a winter annual weed. And therefore, the quicker you can get that rye established, the more of a smothering effect it will have on those weeds. During the summer months in the warmer season would be Palmer amaranth, a more red-rooted pigweed, crabgrass, and uh, common ragweed. Um, of those, the Palmer and the ragweed seem to be developing um, glyphosate resistance for sure. The auxin herbicides that have become available to use through um, traded cotton have really helped control those, knock those down. We try to be as vigilant as we can with those. Um, if we see them after a herbicide pass has been made, we pull them. You know, we try to be, be as hard on them as we can because we don't want those going to seed and becoming a bigger problem next year. Um, Ways we manage them other than the chemicals, the way the cover crops help is... Obviously, the bigger and denser a canopy that you can plant into successfully, the better the weed suppression will be. But the way we do manage any nitrogen-hungry crop is we have to have a cereal. We want that cereal out there. We come in and we terminate that rye grass or, or any, of the, any of the grass crops with a selective chemical that will kill the grass but not the legume. If you just planted legumes, that you would have bare soil throughout the fall and the winter. So we definitely want that rye out there. We want that carbon. We want that coverage. We want those root systems. However, once spring comes and we've kind of maximized what we can deal with as far as the growth and the biomass out of that cover crop, we terminate it with clethodum, which is a, a, a selective herbicide that kills grass. That stops the rye, stops the triticale, stops the rye grass, and it allows the vetch, which is naturally starting to become, to explode in growth at that time of the year anyway, that naturally becomes the dominant species in the field. We get that carbon robbing grass out of the way because we don't want our nitrogen hungry crops going into a zero nitrogen environment. We get that out of the way, we allow that vetch to take over. It now suddenly goes from a zero nitrogen to a nitrogen rich soil environment. Corn, cotton, beautiful to plant into. Um, corn, we're typically planting into it green because we want that vetch to bloom with cotton that's terminating before and planting it two to three weeks later. We've got at least about 50% of our cotton this year we had what I call an adequate vetch stand, and we reduced our nitrogen by 50% on those fields, and we reduced our potash by 50% on those fields. What we've actually found is that savings are a little less pronounced in cotton as compared to corn. Typically with cotton, we would have terminated the, the cover crop two to three weeks before planting, and so it's still a, a good you know, mat of biomass there. But as compared to corn, we're going to be planting that green into a living cover crop that's waist, belly button high, something around there. So it's a tremendous amount of biomass that's living and does a, a much better job of suppressing weed emergence. And so 
once we roll that down and terminate it, it's still just a, a very thick blanket of biomass there. Another major difference would be with corn, we, we at our farm, we plant that on 18 inch centers, whereas cotton is 36 inch centers. Corn shades the middles of the rows a lot quicker than cotton, and therefore that helps a lot in the weed suppression factor too. However, we do definitely feel we get some weed suppression from our cover crops. I just, like I say, I think it's less pronounced than it is in corn. I think the program, as far as a high biomass cover crop program and a targeted cover crop program, based on what you're planting and what you're following and your soils and your species and your management practices, can definitely be a winning formula for an integrated weed management program. The benefits of, of cover crop are almost too much to list. You're, you're preserving your soil. Hopefully, if you're doing it well, you're growing and improving your soil. You're not just maintaining it. You're reducing the pressure from weeds. You're reducing herbicide trips. You're reducing synthetic inputs. I mean, it's just a win-win all the way around. It,